Hey, be the nation. How are you doing? What's up? Okay. We're here. And as promised, we have Jay Long and Centoya here with us who are going to talk in a right. minute. Um, let us get some announcements out first. And I wanted to show you um, the numbers, which we have been meaning to do yeah. um, from Pando. Mm -hmm. So Pando covers what they told us like 300,000 right, um, tablets right now. And I don't know if they're going to expand or not. Um, but these are the numbers on there Chris is going to put up. We, we're getting about over a million hits a month yeah, um, on about, just Pando. Probably about 1.3 a month now. Which is ever growing right, right. now. And um, I know that they just got restored Pando over there in Florida and, and some other places. Yes. And so I'm sure that's going to go up. Um, but there's over a million hits on that. And that's the smaller amount. The other app is Securus. And Securus probably has, who knows, five, at least five times that right. um, hits right. a month or whatever. And that's just in the prisons. That's not, you know, out here, right. Podbean and all over, um, not over United, only United States, but other countries are downloading, um, which is very strange. And yes. hello to all you guys anyway. So I also wanted to like, um, you know, just give you a few places we've heard, we've heard from in the past two days, um, not from just one person, but, you know, these places, Dallas uh, County Jail, all red, um, I heard from a, a, a group of unbelieving seggers okay. um, for now because you belong to Jesus and Come you're going to get it's there. Um, y la chancla viene if you don't. Oh, right? <laughs> so anyway, uh, we love you guys so much. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm honored that you're watching, yes. um, you know, regardless of, you know, you, you're, you're Muslim, you're still Santa right. Muerte, you're Odinist, um, you are an unbeliever right. according to you right now. And you know what I find though about um, those that call themselves unbelievers is they don't want to obey what God says. So they're like, for right now, I don't believe, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and I used to be an unbeliever too yeah. um, when I didn't want to do those things. But anyways, um, you know, thanks you guys for writing yeah. and thank you for listening and, and, and supporting. We love you, we we love love you regardless. so much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Believer, Absolutely. Unbeliever, uh, we love you. Absolutely. So um, um, I also wanted to say, let's see, Bowling Green, Missouri, Bridgeport, MTC, um, some guy who told me that even the complainers know we love them. Uh, like he right. said, well, even they know, they true. know. <laughs> yeah. Caulfield, um, Granite, Oklahoma, uh, G1, two side. Um, thanks for the boxes. Yeah. Um, Cause they made them and there were several guys. Yeah, the jewelry that, boxes. Yeah. Yes. And the, the, you know, Dallas Cowboy yeah. boxes, they made awesome. those. Wilmar, Minnesota, um, ERDCC. I don't know what that is, what it stands for, but Von Terror, Missouri. Hello to you guys. Polunsky and B side. Uh, we heard from you guys. Gib Lewis, Ventura, California, Bridgeport, Connecticut, Charleston, Missouri, Robertson unit, Sumter's, South Carolina, Bushnell, Florida, Crane Unit in Gatesville, Styles Unit in Beaumont, Lewis Complex in Buckeye, Arizona, Mountain View, McAllister, Oklahoma, Robertson, Columbia Correctional in Lake City, Florida, Estelle Clements, uh, let's see, um, Bibb Correctional in Alabama, Just Done Correctional in Oklahoma, Memorial Unit, Rincon Unit, Hobby Unit, uh, Connolly Unit, and Great Falls, Montana, and Lenal. Newport, wow. Arkansas, Homes Correctional and Bonifay, Florida. That's just and that's the last just in the days. past couple of days. <laughs> um, if I didn't mention you, um, um, you know, we'll we'll get it another day. I do want you guys to keep in mind that you have a huge community. Yeah. That you know, there Come are on. so many people serving yeah. God from death row all the way up to field ministers in every, you know, G5, G4, right. um, just because they got in trouble don't mean they don't have God or they didn't come back to God. And so yeah. um you do have a community that are serving God and that we are one body, one spirit. We serve one God. We call out to him and we call out for each other. So um, I wanted to show you those numbers. Yeah, that's awesome. And I do want to say, uh, as far as the cities, some new pins, because Chris is going to show you the map. New pins are Machias, Maine. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, but at some place in Maine, M-A-C-H-I-A-S, Wilmer, Minnesota. That's our first pin in Minnesota. All right. 
we're down to only eight That's states awesome. without a pen. Jay Long, we, we need the rest of those states to come in, bro. <laughs> and help us pray. <laughs> He's obsessed with the map. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of into the map. So <laughs> Martinsville, Indiana is a new pen. And Winsboro, Texas, shout out to Johnson Unit. That's where I grew up. Population 2,924. Wow. wow. Uh, Johnson <laughs> Unit finally put themselves on the map. That's less than a map. unit. That's yeah, I know. That's less unit. than most of the units that <laughs> we reach. <laughs> So anyway, we just want to say uh, hello to all you guys. And I just want to say again about Pando. She's talking about the numbers. Look, the reason why we're excited about trending number one on Pando is because it causes people that wouldn't know it. about our podcast to see right. it, that wouldn't see it otherwise. And we've gotten many letters from guys that started listening because they said, I saw you kept trending on Pando and I wanted to know what was going on. Right. Uh, and so that's the real reason. We live to make his name famous. And do you see on there, it will show how many souls have been saved by watching yes. the program. There's like right. 4,500 at least Correct. on there um, from just when we started from watching the program that have given their lives to the Lord. Um, that's amazing, you know? Yes. And yeah. um, there are so many more um, unreported um, that have given their lives to the Lord. Amen. So our community is growing. Absolutely. We got services coming up. And by this weekend, by the time this podcast gets out and everybody's uh, listening to our guests, we'll be headed towards Blackwater Correctional uh, in Florida on Friday, August 25th. Happy birthday to me. Uh, Santa okay. Rosa Correctional in Florida on August 26th, Saturday. We're going to be in Wynn Unit in Texas, September 3rd. Uh, and then we're going to Lanau Unit, September 29th and 30th for Jam the Rec Yard. That's just some of the units we have coming up. And the newest one that we've added is Ramsey Unit, October 29th. All right. So we're excited about that. All right. So as you can see, we have Jay Long and Centoya here, um, who I just met over the phone not very long ago. And I'm so glad, although I had heard of Centoya's story. I had heard it. Um, I was devastated. I, I was so stressed out by it. I, I thought, I can't watch this. This is just horrible. I, you know, I can't believe this is happening. And um, never dreamt that I would meet her. And that she would be in my house. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Awesome. Um, and she just has such a beautiful God Cinderella story. And um, we are just honored to have them here on the podcast. So, you know, I know Jay uh, knows a few people uh, incarcerated. You want to give some shout outs to maybe? Oh, yeah. So. Uh, my boy, what they call themselves, the Devil Stompers. My yeah, boy, Devil Stompers. My boy, Anthony yeah. Haynes. Yeah. He's sitting on the roll right now in... Uh, in, in Texas. What is that? Livingston, right? Polonsky Unit. Polonsky yeah. Unit, Livingston, right? Texas. So shout out to my boy, Anthony Hayes. Hold your head up. Awesome. Uh, and the Devil Stompers. And then my my cousin, he's in McConnell Unit. Wow. Yeah. John Glover, you know what I'm saying? Say they call him Lil G. So, you know, I, I'm going to call him John Glover, but <laughs> I got to shout out my cousin. They, they, they actually put me on. Those two guys actually put me on to the show early on. They've been wow. telling me, man, real wow. beat, a real beat, a real <laughs> beat. Cool. So shout out to those guys. Love you guys. And I'm happy y'all get to see us in motion and not just through email. Now. Amen. So, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Amen. Family visit. So, yeah, awesome. yeah, family visit. Come on. Awesome. So we're going to start out, I guess, right away and, um, you know, talk to Santoya, you know, whatever you want to share about your childhood. You know, people like to know how you how you grew up and, you know, kind of what, what happened and what guided you, what formed you, that kind of thing, you know. So I grew up in Tennessee um, in a small military town. I was adopted. Um, everything was pretty much normal for me until I started going to school. And the very first day of school in kindergarten, the other kids had asked me why I didn't look like my parents. And it's not something that ever really stuck out to me. They never really made me feel like I didn't fit in somehow. Um, but from that moment, I became aware that I didn't, that I didn't match my family. I found out that day that I was adopted and they had adopted me from a white woman who couldn't take care of me. But, you know, my mom worked really hard to convince me that I was beautiful and I was loved just the way that I was. But like this seed of doubt just took root in my spirit. Yeah. And from that moment, I just felt like I really didn't fit in anywhere. So in every right. space, I always found the things that would distinguish me from the people around me. Wow. Um, and so I just was this very withdrawn child. I didn't want to associate with peers in school. Um, didn't want any help from the teacher, was constantly at odds with the teachers and found myself in the principal's office on a regular basis. <laughs> Started getting suspended from school, sent to ISS, eventually getting expelled from public school altogether, sent to alternative school. And that was really where things went downhill 
for me. I was the youngest kid at that school and they were in there for some pretty serious things. Most of them are already in the system on probation of some form, in custody of some form. And I was sent there for taking a bottle of caffeine pills for show and tell. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Goodness. So um, I started getting involved in things that were much more serious mm-hmm. than that. Um, when I was there and less than six months from the time that I entered alternative school, I was standing before a juvenile court judge at the age of 13. And my charge partners were three of those older kids that I met there. Mm at the alternative school. So that really began this life and the system. And it's like, once you get Mm. in it, it's like nearly impossible to Mm. escape its grasp. And so I was sent to a DCS facility, in and out of facilities. I would run away because who wants to be locked up? Right. Mm. And I would run away from those facilities with other kids that I met there. And that's where I was when I was 16. I was living on the streets. When you're a kid, you're on the streets, you have to survive. You can't just walk into a place of business and say, hey, I need a job. Right. I need to make a legit earning. So you do what comes to you. You do what, what you know, what you're taught. And at that time, the women that were around me that, that welcomed me in, you know, they mm. taught me that using my body was a way mm-hmm. to survive, to get money, to keep food in my mouth, a roof over my head. And I was 14, 15, 16 years old. At this time. And, you know, they didn't refer to it as sex trafficking back right. then, especially for girls that looked like me. Um, so they just said I was promiscuous, that I was fast. But mm. that ultimately led to me meeting um, the man that I would later come to know as my trafficker. But at the time, I considered him my older boyfriend. Okay, right. Mm. So so let's cover a little bit because um, so Centoya's parents that adopted her were black. Yes. And so Centoya is mixed Mm -hmm. and she didn't look black and didn't look white. And so they were trying to place it in probably, I don't know, it depends on where you're from Mm -hmm. um, and the timing that that wasn't acceptable or even seen. Um, Now it is, of course, you know, it's just everywhere, but it wasn't like that. So I just wanted to clarify that because I I know you guys didn't know like, okay, where didn't she fit in? Um, And and so much happened. And then the other thing is, you know, how things that are seem so small Mm. can turn your whole world, Mm. your whole direction Mm. around. And, you know, I read your book, which by the way, we're, we're going to tell you, you know, it's called Free Centoya. Um, where all can they order this book, by the way? Um, it's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. It's on Barnes and Noble, pretty much anywhere okay. that you can purchase books and also to the audio book as well. Okay. So it's a really good book. It's called Free Centoya. So you can see it, you guys. And um, you can have somebody order it for you. Not everybody can write to me and say, send me that book. All right. Because I know you will. But um, so so have your family order it for you also. And um, and, and it helps support their ministry and what have you. And, and it's a yes. great, it's a great book. Um, so, so I related so much to the book. Um, in that age and, and whatever my life. And, and I was in my family and, you know, that we knew we were just Hispanic, um, but we were Pentecostal. Mm-hmm. And we were the only Pentecostal church in town. And so we went to school in Ohio with our little dresses on with snow above our heads. That's odd and awkward. And so um, I didn't fit in. Yeah, so it, it was like the same thing that I didn't fit in. So I'm trying to find where I... F- I fit in. Um, and, and so I recognized so much of what you felt and what happened. And, mm. and at 11 years old, I was sent to the detention center for drugs, truants, and deadly weapons and getting in fights. And I'm, you know, and I'm little, I'm four, nine, and I was like 83 pounds, but I still won. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let the size yeah. fool you. I, can I see still that. won. But, um, but, you know, and I had to, and I saw the things in your book. I thought, wow, I relate, you know, because I had made this determination. I ain't going to lose. <laughs> and if I don't feel like I won enough, I'm coming for you tomorrow, <laughs> you know, um, and, and things that I saw in the book. But so, so many can relate right here to what were those things or reasons you didn't fit in or what it was that began this little left turn Mm. that just kept going left Mm -hmm. and going left. And before you know it, people are wondering, your family wondering, how did you get here? Yeah. We wonder, how did we get here? And it, 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 it could be a seemingly a very small thing that turns the whole course of your life. So, yeah. 
Okay, so we're at what, around 16 years old and... 16 um, in a hotel room with this older guy that's sending me out to go be with strangers. And one night there was a 43-year-old man that picked me up and made me feel very uncomfortable, very unsafe. And I did what, you know, I felt I needed to do. And I ended up shooting him. And so within 24 hours, I was sitting in a police station being charged with murder at the age of 16. Wow. Wow. And so she, 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 you're sent to prison, you go through this process and you're sent to prison and really a 16 year old child, child. Yeah. I mean, y- your mind's not even fully really developed and um, you're, you're a complete, you're just, you're just a child. Yeah. So you go there and um, what is what is on your mind and what's going on? Um, there was an outcry, was there not, from the public that did know? Well, at that time, um, the outcry was that I should be tossed away for the rest of my life. Wow. Mm-hmm. It was completely different. So this was in 2004, and all of the news stations around were just portraying me, you know, as this dangerous person. They called me a teen prostitute because back then— like I was saying to you earlier, the word trafficking didn't apply to girls like me that looked like me, that acted like me, that came from where, you know, I was coming from. Um, that was reserved for a different class of people. Wow. And so for me, it wasn't that, you know, the things that were happening to me by all these grown adult men, you know, wow. these weren't violations. These were acts of my own volition. You know, I was welcoming that in the eyes of law enforcement, in the eyes of the community. Um, and so now, you know, they painted me as this dangerous person that needed to be kept away from society. Nobody really questioned what happened when the police officers came to get me out of the hotel room with this 24-year-old man. And I'm obviously this little, little bitty 16-year-old kid, half naked, no questions. He was released that same night. Wow. Um, so nobody really Shocking. dug into that and it was all on me. And so that's what the the whole media narrative was at that time. And I remember that I would just sit in there in my cell and I would just pray. I was like, God, get me out of here. I said, you know, if I pray this prayer every single day mm-hmm. and I found I got a hold of a mustard seed, I said, if I hold this mustard seed while I do it, I had all these rules in my mind of what would happen. Like mm-hmm. this was the formula, like yeah. I had hacked it, that this was going to happen because my mother had, had raised me in the Baptist church. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went every Sunday, Wednesday night, even when I didn't want to, I was going. Yes. Um, And so I thought, like, you know, this is the formula. So this is all I have to do, and everything is just going to be fine. And I prayed that I wouldn't be transferred. Well, I ended up being transferred, and that meant that I was going to be tried as an adult. That meant that instead of me going to DCS and receiving, you know, services until I was 19, I was going to be probably sentenced to life in prison, which is 51 calendar years in the state of Tennessee. Wow. And so I was transferred. Well, then I said, okay, I just need to pray harder and I need to fast. And so I would sit there and I would fast for like a few hours because I can't go that long without food. (laughs) And I said, well, this is what I need to do. And I just need to read the whole Bible. And this is all I have to do. And everything is going to be fine. And with every hearing where things didn't work out and things weren't going in my favor, I was like, you know what? This just isn't even real. Like, this is ridiculous. This is just some book that people made up. And all these people wrote these, you know, these letters in this book and it's just not even real. God is not real. And there was one last prayer that I prayed after I was sentenced at the age of 18 by this time to life in prison, 51 calendar years. And I held it together because, you know, like you, I wasn't going to let anybody see that anything got to me. So I held it together till I got back to my cell and in the dark, I just threw myself on my bunk and I said, God, if you let me out of here, I will tell the whole world about you and what you did for me. And that was the very last prayer that I prayed for over a decade. After that, I just became so bitter and so angry. And I told myself it was, you know, this logical explanation for this that, you know, God didn't exist. I could argue down the most educated philosophical professors. Rubel Shelley can can take note of that. He's, <laughs> he's very prolific in the state of Tennessee for that, my philosophy teacher. But I would argue down about the improbability of the existence of God. Like I can go on and on and on. 
And, you know, I was just adamant in this. And you had all these people, these wonderful people who loved Jesus and came in who loved mm-hmm. us through the Lipscomb program that continued to show up. And I would just tell them every day, like, I love you, you're great, but you know your God's not real, right? Anybody who would listen, I told them that. And that's really where I was when I met Jay Long. How did that happen? So basically, like, um, I was traveling back and forth to California at the time. I was telling y'all off camera, um, I had a record deal on the table. And the record deal was pretty much based off of if I had my album done or not. So they heard about four or five songs, and then they said, was the album done? I said, yeah, it's done. It wasn't done. (laughs) (laughs) So I had to fly back to to Texas. I was living in Houston at the time to go finish this album up, and I'm in the studio, and I have writer's block for the first time in my life. Like, I have writer's block. I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm in there with my cousin, Prince, and I'm, I'm trying to force music. It's just not coming. But on the other end of where the studio is, we have this room where we keep the TV on. We keep YouTube on. You know, we're, we're usually watching sports highlight. We just never turn this TV off. So it was this story, and it was, uh, it was her story, because they had shot a PBS documentary about her. And it was when she first got in, I think she was 16. So it was recommended for me to watch it. And I'm just like, why? You know, and it's like an hour long. And I was like, yeah, no way. I'm not watching TV that long unless it's my Tennessee Titans. Oh, uh, I was going to ask who the team is. Tennessee Titans. I forgive you, bro. Yeah. I, hey, look, I know I'm in Dallas Nation right yes. now, right? So I got to be quiet. Got to make it out of here. Safe. There's a lot of haters out there watching. You're in good company. It's all right. So um, I click this. I click it. It's an hour long and I start watching. I'm kind of laying on the bed. I'm frustrated because I can't write nothing. And I just start watching this. And an hour goes by, and it's over. And I'm just like, wow. So I get up, and I'm going back in the studio. And I say, all right, man, I'm going to go right. I walk out the room. God stops me. And he says, hey, write that girl a letter. Hmm. And I say, and say what? <laughs> I don't talk to strangers. <laughs> he said, boldly, tell her, introduce yourself, tell her who you are, and tell her to prepare herself because she's about to get out of prison. Wow. Wow. And I'm just like, that's a bold thing to say to yes. someone yes. Yes. who is serving a life sentence. Yes. I yes. don't know this girl. Yeah. Uh, and you want me to say what? <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I done it. I wrote the letter. Boom. Wrote it. And I found her address online. I didn't even know what her address was, you know. <laughs> so I just found this address and I was like, well, I hope this is the right one. And I put it in an envelope and he was like, take it back out. Okay. So I take the letter back out. He said, now burn the edges of the letter for me. Huh. Wow. So I burned the edges of the letter. Anything else you need me to do <laughs> with this letter? Put it back in the envelope. I sent it off, totally forgetting that I even sent this letter. Two weeks go by. I'm coming back from Cali. They gave me the deal in Cali. We excited. I'm coming back. I get back, check my mail. Tell my, hey, hey, tell my cousin, Oh, man, old girl wrote me back, bro. <laughs> I totally forgot her. I was like, man, old girl wrote me back, bro. <laughs> so I open it. I read it. And she was like, hey, yeah, what's up? Uh, I'm Centoya, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I heard you saying that God said I'm about to get out of prison. But uh, my last appeal got denied. There's no other way for me to get out. But you're really cute. So if you want to write me back, <laughs> write me back. <laughs> so I was like, so when I read it, I read it like, like we was having a little beef. Oh, you want to tell me what my God can't do? Yeah. So I was like, hold on, bro. <laughs> so I went back to yeah. I went back to writing, and that just started us writing back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. We wrote back and forth for like what four four months, mm-hmm. wow. and then I was like, the Lord was like, uh, okay, I want you to go see her. 
And I was like, nah, I don't really want to do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's time for me to 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 go do my thing now. You know, it's time. They're ready for me to come back up and let's let's get everything. And you said you already had that album. Yeah, I had. I'm done. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm good. So it's, 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 it's like, I, yeah. well, it's time for me to go get it popping now. Like the album's done, turned in, everything's done. So I'm like, all right, cool. He said, well, look, before you do all that, just go see her for me. So I like she, we were talking on the phone. We were calling each other at the time. So well, she was calling me through GTL. So she calls me and I'm like, hey, look, I want to come see you. And she was like, yeah, that's a process. She said, and it could take up to three months if they do it the right way. She says sometimes your paperwork gets lost, mm -hmm. so she was like, um, "You can you can fill it out, but it might take a while." So I was like, "Yes, like because God, I don't have to go see, like, I don't have to go to this prison, <laughs> like I can go to Cali and be like, hey, Lord, I tried.' You know, <laughs> you know yes. how we on, we yes. try to outsmart yeah. God. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Yeah. So she calls me back literally in three days mm -hmm. and says. Hey, this never happens. Your paperwork <laughs> got approved. And I was like, wow, Yo. that's so crazy. So next thing I know, I'm on a plane headed to Nashville. And I'm getting ready to walk into this prison. And the only people I've ever visited in prison is my cousin, John Glover, and Anthony Haynes. That's the only people wow. I've ever visited in prison. But this was different. I'm going to see a woman in prison and I'm trying to, I'm still like trying to make this woman real to me because all I know is that 16 year old on that documentary. Mm -hmm. So it's not real to me. Like, I'm just like, what am I doing? Like, am I really on a plane right now? Am I really wow. going into a prison right now? Wow. And I'm established, like I'm living a great life, a comfortable life for what we would call, I'm driving a Bentley around Texas. Oh I'm, I'm living like, and... And going all the way from Houston yes, to Tennessee. To that's Tennessee. crazy. That's so, shocking. So God. like, wow. I'm, 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 I remember standing in line. Everything went perfectly smooth for mm. some reason. I pull up to the prison. How you doing, sir? <laughs> Everything was perfectly smooth. And I walk up to this, what, a metal door? Mm -hmm. And it... <laughs> yeah. It opens up. And I see her. She's about 12 feet in front of me. And I see her, and I didn't see that little sad girl. Yeah. What I saw was my wife. Mm. And the Lord said, hey, remember you told me you wanted to settle down and you asked me for a wife? Mm. There she go. And <laughs> when I looked at her, I knew that deal in Cali. I knew yeah. all that stuff was gone. Yeah. And all I seen was, oh, this is about to be an interesting journey. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So... I go sit down at the table with her and she'll tell you probably like the first five minutes, like I couldn't talk. <laughs> I couldn't talk. Mm. You know, she was calling me by my government name, Jamie, Jamie. And I was just like, <laughs> and I kept saying, what was I saying? I was You're like, not You're not supposed, supposed to be, be here. here. <laughs> like, and he was getting louder each time and people were and looking. I, it I was wasn't like, like I was talking oh, to crazy. her either. I wasn't talking. It was, I was just like, man, she's not. Yeah, but you're not supposed, supposed to be, be here. And like, he well, kept is, on for like five my, minutes. She's my wife. She's not. Like, I'm I'm having this conversation. <laughs> well, why is she in here? And she's like. Wow. Yes, Lord, if this is my wife, why is she here? <laughs> Jamie. Like, yeah. okay, Jamie. Jamie. And I was just like, and I snap out of it. And, you know, I had told myself, I'm going to stay here for 20 minutes and I'm out. <laughs> Turned into four hours. Wow. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> four hours. And. Like I say, that's pretty much where it all started. So if it makes you feel any mm. better, when I first saw my wife, September seventh, nineteen ninety seven, in Lubbock, Texas, God told me she was my wife. He didn't tell her right away either. Wow! If it makes you feel any but better, you had your but business, I knew it. Though. <laughs> you, 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 you that's what I'm talking about. Texas boy, <laughs> Texas, Texas boy, Texas boy. That's what's yeah. up. Yes. So, so yeah. Detroit, give us your part of it. But what's going on in your mind? You know, you've row and and now he comes to visit you. What's going on in your mind? And and are you a Christian already now at this point or not? And so at this point, like we had started talking back and forth, but when I first got his letter, like it's crazy that God told him to burn the edges because that's literally 
one of the only reasons why I wrote back. That's why I really paid attention wow. to it. Wow. Because at that time, there was that documentary, so I was getting all this mail, yes. and I would write all, everybody back because I felt like, you know, kind of obligated to write people back. Like, man, this person all the way in this other state yeah. took the time to write me this and let me know that they were thinking of me, they were wow. rooting for me, so I'm going to write them back. Well, then I found from my family members that people were taking letters that I had written and posted them online, oh. which was weird to me. Oh. <laughs> then I got some other weird people that, yeah. Yes. I mean, people, y'all yes. know. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They know. Yes. Yes. They know. Yes. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, I'm done with all this pen pal stuff. <laughs> and so I wasn't really writing people, but like I would read what they wrote. I would read the letters. So I loved Mel Call. And then I got this letter, but it was unlike any other letter I got because it was so cool how he had burned the edges yeah. of the paper. I had never Stood seen out. a letter like that. Amazing. <laughs> That's yes. something. And wow. So then and I that's really, strange. That, that, yeah. that may be the reason God said do it. Obedience. It's, yeah. yeah. And it's stand in the out. small detail. Yeah. Even when Obedience. it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Listen. I mean, it doesn't make sense Listen. that I'm even going to this uh, prison. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so, so you said that and I thought, okay, we crazy enough. There are some religious people behind bars, right? No. So you said that and I thought, oh, no. Oh, here we go. They're going to be going like, he burned the paintings. That's witchcraft or, you know, whatever, you know, because you know how that is, right? Yeah. But it may have been the reason why he said, so she, So just stand out. We don't always know why God says what, right? And I was hearing um, the other day because, you know, the water bottle baptism and um, there's some behind bars that are sure. like, you got to be immersed. <laughs> Let's do this again. Yeah, right? that's what's up. And, um, and, and it's faith and it's by faith, it's by, by faith. faith. And so, you know, I was thinking about it and, and the woman that was coming to touch the hem of his garment, Where's yep. that in the scripture? Exactly. It never it doesn't yep. say in Genesis chapter 1, 14. Right. And then you rush to touch the hem of his garment. Right. She was doing something unprecedented. Illegal, that, in it was in yeah. the, it was in, in fact yes. against the law for her yes. to do this because she right. was unclean. Yes. And she began to run through that crowd. And I think it's the only time that unclean went her way. She's like, unclean, move out yeah. the way. Yeah. Right? You know? yeah. Um, it was great to be unclean. But you know, that's the thing. It, not everything is is written. We do things in faith. Yeah. And it seems to be what catches the attention of God, the obedience and the faith. I desire obedience, not sacrifice. Come on. You know, and so that's a perfect example of it, that yeah. it stood out. How so amazing. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. I was waiting to hear her yeah. respond. To, what, what about this burning the pages? That yeah. is so uh -huh. cool. Well, that's, that's what made it stand out. Yeah. And then, you know, I looked at his pictures and I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to write back. He's a yeah. handsome man. Yes, he is. Yeah. <laughs> So I wrote him back and, you know, he said all this about, you know, God's going to free you. And I'll never forget the letter now because it's so prophetic when we look yes. back. Mm -hmm. And he signed it at the bottom. He said, Free Centoya 2017. Wow. Hashtag Free Centoya 2017. Mm. And this was in January of 2017. No one was really talking about me. The documentary that had been made huh. was made back in like 2011. And so everything had kind of died down. And like I had told him, my last appeal was denied. So I lost my my direct appeal because I went to trial. I lost my direct appeal. I lost my state post-conviction appeal. And then I lost my federal habeas corpus. And they refused to give me a, a permission to appeal it. So every chance I had was mm. pretty much dead. And so then there was this like far off notion of clemency, but nobody had really gotten clemency by the governor in the state of Tennessee. And the only person wow. that had got it in the past 20 years was a woman who was taken off death row and given a life sentence. Mm. Wow. So for this man to come along and say, no, God says you're about to get out, wow. meant that my 51 year sentence would have had to been literally turned around to a 15 year, because I had certain 15 years at this time. Got it. it was Turn ridiculous, yeah. right? Ridiculous wow. at the time, but like I said, he was fine. So I, I wrote him back, and I was like, <laughs> "Okay, you can Thank do this." You, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and he just started challenging me through all those letters of this conversation that we would have. And it's not like he was like trying to force anything down my throat, right. like some people would do. He was just sharing his own yes. experiences, and it opened up things in my mind. And it's like, you know what? I've experienced that too. He started telling me about how he would hear the voice of the Lord from a young age. And I told him some of the experiences that I had, these dreams that I started having when I was down in the prison in Memphis, yeah. where completely random, I would dream these things and they would actually come to pass. And it was about a puppy program. Yes, so I, I saw that in the book. Yeah, you saw that in the yes. book. I don't want to ruin it for anybody who's going to get the book. <laughs> and, and by the way, if you can't have your family members, you don't have anybody to do it, you can also go to your library and ask them to request it through an interlibrary loan. Awesome. Great. Um, but in the in the book, you know, I talk about that. I dreamed about these puppies. I was like, no, I heard you say 
that the puppies were coming and then the puppies appeared and this would happen again wow. and again. So I knew I was like, wait a minute, I can't continue to say that God is just not real. He was teaching you his voice. And that's yeah. Yes. Wow. So, I, so at that time I said, I'm just going to call this the universe. The universe yeah. is speaking to me. The universe, there's energies. I got uh -huh. into all that mess. Yeah. And, you know, that's what I was telling him. He was like, girl, <laughs> 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 you know his name. You know who yeah, that's it is. That's right. Wow. Come on. You know where that truth is. The only place that you're going to find where that is happening. He would show me these stories in the Bible. Yes. Same things that was happening yes. to me. And I was like, you know what? You're right. And he said, Do you know what it is, though? He said, you're mm. angry. You're angry because you feel like you didn't get what you asked of him. And you've been treating him like a genie in a bottle. And I was Come like, on. you may be right. Mm. Yes. And so he really called me out on it. Yes. And then, you know, when I started to open up and I talked to him about it, I was like, Jamie, I literally begged him every single day, like for me not to get life in prison. And now here I am, last appeal denied, life in prison. Hello. Mm. And he was like, who told you God was done? Right. Hmm. I said, Jamie, I just told you my last appeal was, th that's it. I have no chances. Like, just November of that year, this was January 2017, November 2016, my last appeal was denied. Hmm. No permission to appeal. It's dead. It's done. It's not happening. And he said, there's two reports out here. There's man's report Come and on. there's God's report. I gave you God's report. God told me to tell you that you're getting out of prison. Man says wow. you're going to stay here and do life. You are going to have to make a choice on who you're going to believe. Yeah. Come on. yeah. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to believe in God because yeah. there's still something in my spirit that doesn't believe it when I tell somebody that I'm doing life in prison. It feels like I'm lying. Wow. So I'm going to believe in this God. Amen. I'm going to start to get to know this God instead of viewing him through this lens of hurt and disappointment. Right. Viewing him through the way that other people present him to me. Yes through the world like to talk about. I'm going to start to get to know him mm. for myself. Yes. I want you to mm. teach me how to do that. Show me how you did that. Mm. And so that's how we just developed this relationship. And I honestly didn't think anything real could like become of it because like I, like I said, you know, I, I still had this sentence over my head. I was starting to learn about faith, but he was living his life. Honey, he had this nice luxury condo, <laughs> his Bentley, Mercedes, like all this, like could do whatever Jump. he wants. And it's fine. Okay, let's not forget <laughs> that. That's very important. <laughs> and so I was like, well, what could I possibly have to offer him? But, you know, he was around. So I was like, well, I'm going to rock with him as long as he's going to rock with me. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I was just loving like that I was getting to know God and I was getting to know him awesome. closer. And it was just... It was really amazing. Amen. Like just going I hope you all are hearing that. So. You're, you're hearing what she just said. Come that on. because yeah. that's what I've been telling you guys, and that's that's what happened to me. You know, I was 17. I was pregnant. I had moved back into my mom's house. She found out I was pregnant. She told me to get out, um, and I went to God, and I was like, "If you're real, and if you would want me, um, please, I can't do this by myself." But I said, I don't want to know the God that I saw portrayed in so many denominations and so many people. I want to know who you really are, like from scratch. Hmm. And so I started reading the Bible and, and I, I, when I talked to Jay, I told him I read it in six weeks. Genesis to Revelation took me like eight hours a day. Every day, eight hours a day, I read that. It wasn't a chore. It was like it was saturating this desert that I was. And I found out so many things I didn't know about him. No one had ever told me. And there were so many things that I had been told about him that weren't true mm -hmm. and weren't in there. And I got to know him. And so that's what I want you to hear on this point is get to know him for you. Yeah. Yes. If you pray and you say, and, and, and you know, God, show me who you really are. Like, yeah, there's hypocrites. There's hypocrites everywhere. Everywhere yeah. in there, out here, they're everywhere. Um, there's hypocrites of every kind. And um, and so you got to say, God, show me who you really are. And and I was um, seeing, I actually, Zonti give this example. I thought that's a great example of, um, he was over in Africa on a show. And, and they said, what to people that say, well, there's so many hypocrites. And he said, if you went to a game, if you went to a Cowboys game, we'll say 
and there's somebody there and they're drunk and they got the cowboy jersey on and they're doing stupid things and you're like, what an idiot, you know. You don't leave the cowboys because he represented in the jersey wrong. Right. Right. Come on. Well, people are wearing God's jersey wrong. All yeah. right. And yeah. they're they're drunk and they're like crazy that. and they misrepresent and yeah. they judge you and they hurt you, but they're just wearing the jersey. I like yeah. They ain't God. Right. You know? Right. And so when we say, God, show me who you really are, he does. Mm. And that's yeah. for anyone at all. So, okay. So where we're at in the love story. Yeah. So about less than three months from them, from that day, when I said, you know, I'm going to go deeper with God and we started this on, that's when I got the news from my attorneys that that very last appeal that was denied by the federal habeas court and they said I couldn't appeal. Yeah. Well, they went back and changed their mind. And wow. so it got opened back up. <laughs> oh my goodness. And that was Unheard something of. that... Exactly. Unheard of. All of my attorneys had like over 20 years experience, never experienced anything like that in their their entire career. Completely shocked. Mm. And I remember I went and I told Jamie and he was just so calm when I called him on the phone. He was like, why are you surprised? (laughs) (laughs) It was like he was so assured that, you know, in his faith that God is going to do exactly what he said he was going to do. So it didn't even shock him. And he was like, you haven't even seen anything yet. He said, God is just showing you. He's just letting you know. So now, I remember that second visit, though, when I went to see her for the second time. Yeah, right after this. Right after this. So this is going to be my second time seeing her in my life. We weren't married at the time, uh, at least, you know, on paper. Yeah. But So um, this time it wasn't as smooth. Mm-hmm. I pull up to the prison and it's like 20 guards outside. It's huh. They got dogs and they got all this. So, you know, I'm like, this is interesting. Well, I ain't did nothing wrong. So let's just see what, this, see what the issue is, man. So uh, my cousin was driving. We had just drove from Texas. It was my birthday, too. And I was coming to surprise her. She thought her mother was coming in to see her because what your mother used to come on, like, every mm-hmm. weekend or something like that. And she was acting weird. Yeah, she, 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 <laughs> she could tell. So, you know, me, me and her mom had, like, kind of put this plan Conspired. together. Yeah. yeah. Like, Wear your hair curly. You know, I like it when you wear it curly. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. I was like, I'm going to go pop up on her, Miss B. I'm going to go pop up on her. And, you know, she ain't going to know nothing. So I get there and... um. Just to uh, make a long, a long story short, they didn't let me in. And i never forget, they put me like in this little cage thing. I don't know what it was. And they ran this dog around me. And I'm just like, yo, man, what's going on? And all I hear is the Lord saying, humble yourself. Because it's like, man, look, I'm a singer, but it's like you, um, I'm going to be like, all right, look. I'm far from punk. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't get it twisted. <laughs> John Glover, no. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just like, yo, man. I'm like, and the Lord's saying, don't say nothing. Humble yourself. So, I'm humbling myself. And I, I can begin to just see, like, okay. Like, you can, you can see the enemy working yes. through these people. Yes. Mm. It's like it was slow motion or something to me. Like, you wow. can see it. So, i never forget. And it's my birthday, too. So, the guy comes up to me, one of the, one of the, uh, the guards, and he was like, yeah, you ain't, you ain't getting in. And I say, man, it's my birthday, man. We just drove 13 hours straight, oh, man. man. I said, man, I haven't done nothing, man. He said, yeah, you ain't getting in. Man. He said, who you here to see anyway? And I told him, he grabs the general, oh, yeah, and tell you. So I was like, okay, <gasps> let, me, let me chill. And so I said, well, can I speak to the warden? She ain't going to do nothing. Well, can I speak to her? She right there. She was standing right behind us the whole time, watching the whole thing go down. So I walk up to her and I was like, can you explain like what's going on? And she says, no, leave. So I didn't call her nothing crazy. You know what I did? Have a blessed day. She gave me two fingers like this. <laughs> oh, mm. Wow. I say, you have, you have a blessed day. I start walking off and she says, maybe you can come back in a year. Oh, my goodness. And I said, wow. Walk back to the car. Hey, happy birthday. God bless you, man. Wow. I get in the car. 
I look at my cousin. I say, man, we got to drive. 13 hours back, brother. He's like, all right, man. And I wasn't, uh, I was upset, but I wasn't like, it's, it's something that didn't, I, I felt like a, a mm. peace beyond my understanding. Yeah. Why ain't I slapping people right now? <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But I felt a peace. And her mother, I called her mother. I said, hey, listen, Sin's going to call you and wonder why ain't nobody coming in to visit her. I say, so when she comes in, tell her to call me immediately. I didn't even want to tell her mother what happened because I didn't want her mother to. Yeah. So I'm thinking about, oh, snap, she's going to hear about this. Mm -hmm. And I know how far she's coming of faith just so that right there can be a deal breaker. She can go right. to flipping right. tables mm -hmm. and, yes. and going off in there. And she had a little of that in her. She, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I noticed that she just like Y'all are like twins. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, and, and largely that probably was why, you know, because God's mm. going like, you 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 seemingly lost the battle, but you're going to win this war. Come on. Uh, and that's, you know? Yeah, and that's, yeah. that's, that's exactly what I Come was, on. That, that piece. Yes. Yeah, so it was like, now it was more so he told me to tell her to prepare yes. to get out of prison. Now mm -hmm. he was telling me, all right, you passed this test. Now mm -hmm. you go back to Texas and start getting prepared Yes, yeah. for what I, let me work on you Come now. On. Yeah. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So it's like, I was like, cool. And I told her, she dealt with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it was cool. And I, I was very, very, I was very proud of her. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. I was That's very awesome. proud of it. I was like, okay, I don't she know what's going to happen. She could have got sent to the hole on that one. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I don't yeah, know what's no. going to happen when, when, we, when we hang up this phone. But I was like, yo. I said, listen, just calm down. Everything's going to be all right. Yes. Yeah. They said I can't come back. And people don't understand that, man. I only seen my wife one time wow. before we got married. That's crazy. Wow. One time in my life. I wouldn't see her <laughs> again so for awesome. another almost what? What? How long was it? I seen it was you over two years. Over two years. My I wouldn't goodness. see her. I seen wow. her one time. Wow. And you know what? I mean, I'll say that we've seen a lot of uh, women do that in weight, but not a lot of men. And so True. it's just so beautiful, yeah. you know, that yeah. well, I, I, I thought I lost them. <laughs> crazy, great Cinderella story. I mean, it's so amazing. Um, and, and I would like you to like share that. So, so you weren't living, you were still in Houston and Houston. you weren't living in Tennessee yet, but you do move to Tennessee. Let's I tell do. us about that. So pretty much our pastor, Tim McGee, literally what, what year are we in when we get this phone call? This is 2018, right? When we get the phone call. Yes. Okay. So. Pastor Tim McGee, he calls and he tells us, he say, hey, something is going to happen in the month of March hmm. that is it, it, that is going to be pertaining to your release, her release. And I was like, over November. Well, help me tell the story, baby. So Take remember up. I told you about that letter he wrote, right? Where he put that hashtag Free Centoria yes. 2017 yes. in that letter. He wrote that in January. And so after this had happened, this happened in June, and we just stayed, you know, committed. We got closer. I got closer to God, and I just wow. gave it gave it to God. I went to the point where, you know, I just started rebuking my own attorneys whenever they told me that <laughs> there wasn't, news. Yeah, there wasn't yeah. a great chance that the governor would let mm -hmm. me out. I was like, oh, no, baby, my God said I'm going to be set free, so I'm going to be set free. Amen. And I yeah. rebuke you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> yes. Come on. That was my favorite saying. Yeah. And so November, it was around Thanksgiving, right before Thanksgiving, I woke up and everybody was like, Oh, you know, you're all over the internet. Everybody's talking about you. I was like, what? And I called him and I asked him about it. And this hashtag had gone viral. Hashtag free Centoya. Wow. And I went back to that letter and I was like, oh, wow. yeah, God's getting me out of here. Yeah. <laughs> God's, God's getting me out of here. So that was November. But then after that, everything was just like wildfire everywhere. All on ABC, Good Morning America, everything. But then it was just completely quiet. Yeah. Right after. You heard nothing. And so that's when Pastor Tim told him. Like, so Pastor Tim, he tells us that something's going to happen in March. Because when it went quiet, it's like, we're like, uh, yeah. like you where know, are you, God? Yeah, where, where are you at? So he tells us something's going to happen in March. And March comes. Because he told us this in February. He said, you're going to get a date. date. He that's going to lead to you getting out. He said, I don't know what that what date is and yes. what it means, but it's going to be something that leads you closer to getting out of prison. Wow. And he hung up the phone. Hmm. 
literally told, he told me, hung up the phone. So I was like, all right. So I told her. And this was in February 2018. And so March comes. March 1st, we looking. What's going on? Yes. March 2nd, we looking. Yes. March 3rd. <laughs> we get to the last day in March. Wow. Her attorney calls me one morning and I'm like, what is this dude doing calling me? He calls me on the last day of March. She usually calls me early in the morning when the phones come on. Mm -hmm. So he calls me and he says, hey, when uh, Centuria calls you, tell, tell, her, tell her to give me a call. I got to tell her something. And I'm just like, okay. Well, if you talk to her before, you know, before she calls me, tell her that. And he told me what he told me. And I was like, all right, man. And I didn't think it was nothing. So she calls and we just sitting on the phone. And, you know, it's a 30 minute phone call before it goes off. And we all kind of sad because it's the last day of March. And we just Aww. like, man, Lord, what's up? And so... Remember, it was like, you have two minutes left on the call, whatever. <laughs> yes. And I was like, oh, um. By the way. By the way, mm -mm, your lawyer called me this morning. She said, and said what? I said, I don't know. He said something about you getting a hearing. She said, what? Jerry, are you crazy? What are you talking about? I said, I don't know, man. He said something about a hearing. I mean, I don't want to hear nothing. I want you to get out. I want to. Like, she's like, no, this is a hit. This is crazy. It takes a hearing. Like, you don't understand what this is. Man, I ain't never been to prison. I ain't know. So I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm thinking like, I don't know. You know, I'm no. thinking God is just going to boom. Let her out. Yes. <laughs> so, so, Let my people yeah, go. Yeah, exactly. That's right. So I didn't know. So it was like, and it's like, she was like, I gotta, I'm gonna hang up and call you back. Cause you know, the phone was like, so now she calls me back. She's totally screaming, totally going crazy. I'm like, break this down to me. What does this mean? And I had to explain to him, like, you know, I filed a clemency application with the governor. What normally happens is the parole board who's responsible for screening them rejects them, denies them. The governor never sees mm. them. Nothing ever happens. Nobody gets hearings on their clemency petitions. That doesn't happen. Wow. They actually did a study on it in our state and in the state of wow. Tennessee, less than 1% of wow. people who file clemency mm. applications at this time mm. would ever get a hearing before the parole board. And mind you, that judge and jury told me that I would be 67 years old before I ever got to meet with the parole board. So wow. here I was 30 years old and you're telling me that I have a hearing mm. on my clemency petition, mm. less than 1% of on. people who will. And I'm 30 years old, finna mm. go before the parole board. I yeah. was like, that's amazing. So, that yeah. puts me one step closer. I said, Jamie, you have to have that. So you have that recommendation, whatever it is, yay or nay on file. So it gets sent to the governor's office for them to make their decision. This mm. puts me one step closer. This is what Pastor Tim was saying. It puts me one yeah. step closer March in that 31st. process. And look yeah. how you think, you know, so many times I always tell people that, you know, God is never late, but man, he pushes it. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> wow, right in time, you know. Uh, and that's how it was the last day of March. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Man, so, so it was that was the last day. So it's like, OK. And you got to understand, like, so I'm going through this process where I don't really understand. I'm I'm literally watching a miracle, too, because yes. it's like yes. I was obedient. Yes. I told her she was getting out of prison, but I didn't know we were going to be in this relationship. I thought I was writing a letter to somebody that I never was going to talk to again. Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like. Our yeah. journeys are now, you know, well, yes. it's, it's like, wow. Like you didn't know you were going to ride shotgun on it's it. Yeah. 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 It's, it's very personal. Yes. So, you know, um, we get to this point to where it's like, all right, that's March. And we get to the end of the year. And I don't know if you want to tell anything that happened between March and December. But if not, I'll just go ahead and let you I mean, you we, we had the hearing. They had the hearing, and that was that. Two, it was split. So was two split. said, get out immediately. Two, two said, said, never get out. out. Two yeah. said, get wow. out after 25 years. Yeah. Wow. And one didn't show up. Wow. Yeah. That would have broke the, mm. you see what I'm saying? My so, goodness. So um, that was that. So, you know, again, people were speaking doubt. 
well, what if this and what if that? It was that? real heavy. It was this real, This is our real wilderness heavy. period. Real heavy. Yes. So yes. Your faith is tested. That's when I started warning the spirit. Like, yes. I'm, I'm up. You know, I'm up at Come night. On. I'm going in. Come on. Like, yeah. what's up? Like, mm-hmm. I'm going in. But yeah. this time, I'm not asking God for what he already told me what was going to happen. I'm thanking him for what's going to, yeah. what's coming Come in on. advance. Come I'm on. giving him thanks. Yes. So I'm, I'm thanking him for her being free. I'm thanking, that's what I'm on, you yeah. know? Yeah. And um, I never forget. He literally told me, but start taking the pictures off your walls in the condo. Mm-hmm. Start taking the pictures off your wall. Go move to Tennessee. Hmm. I don't know. Nobody out there. Mm. Well, where am I going when I get to Tennessee? Just go. I'll tell you when you get there. Come on. Yeah. I started taking, taking, taking pictures off the walls. And then he said, yeah, and you can't take that Bentley down there with, come on, not my Bentley. Like, no, 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 not my Bentley. Yeah. So had to get rid of the Bentley, had to get rid of all that material junk. Wow. Um, and I'm on the highway headed to Tennessee. Mm-hmm. But before she had called me, <laughs> she was like, oh what, my gosh. what are you doing? Go ahead. <laughs> you t- yeah. So like while he was going through all this, it was this wilderness period. Everybody was in doubt and stuff. And, you know, I took a job in the chapel. I was like, I'm going to surround myself with the word. All Come day. On, I don't awesome. want to hear nothing. I started yes. rebuking everybody. Yes. He was like, girl, you need to be warned too. You need to stand before those walls and tell them my mm. father said I'm free. You got no choice to comply. And so I was doing that, walking around like a crazy person, <laughs> speaking to the prison walls, <laughs> yeah. doing all this. I was just on fire. But mm. then I called him and he was like, I said, what are you doing? He said, just sitting here on the floor. Just mm. looking. I was like, why are you why why are you sitting on the mm. floor? Why why are you sitting on the floor? He said, Well, I don't have any furniture. I was like, well, where's your fr- where's your furniture? Where's your furniture? <laughs> and he said, God told me to get rid of it. Wow. Yeah. He told me to come come to Tennessee and get my wife. And then all of a sudden that doubt like just mm. took hold of me. And I was like, Well, wait a minute, I don't I don't know what's gonna happen yet. And he rebuked me. Yeah. <laughs> come on. Yeah. He rebuked me. Come he on. was like, I done yep. told you. Mm. Well, God said to come get my wife. This is in November. And we've heard nothing. And so I was like, you know what? You're right. You're right. And after that, I started having these dreams because we were still wondering what was going to happen. Now, mind you, the governor, he leaves. This is his last term. So he's going to leave in January. We're at, towards the end of November hearing nothing. Wow. It was like right after Thanksgiving. You came up wow. here November 30th. And so we'd heard nothing. And so we're just wondering because he could do that. He can say absolutely nothing. But, you know, we said, no, this doesn't seem right. God didn't say he's going to get you out in 20 years, 30. He said, you know, go it's get your now. wife. Yeah. And so... I started having these dreams again for the second Mm. time since I was in Memphis. And in these dreams, I was getting out and it was dark and it was raining, which didn't really make sense because whenever you're released from the prison, you're always released at the same time. It's around after count time, between 12, 1 o'clock, something like that. But it was pitch black and I know it had been storming the whole night. And I kept Mm. having that dream and I said, Jamie... I said, I keep having this dream. He was like, okay, well, let's see what the weather says. And so we would watch the forecast. <laughs> yeah. Come on. And That's I had by up. this time packed up just yeah. this little bag. I had given away everything that my I owned. Goodness. Like all oh my, my, all my good hair wow. clips. Like y'all know all yeah. the good hair clips oh, wow. and lip glosses and yeah. perfumes. I gave away all that. All my contraband. <laughs> oh, wow. I gave away everything. And I just packed up this small bag. And people were like, are you sure? Are you crazy? He gave away my good blanket that I crocheted mm. with the soft yarn, the burnet, the the chunky burnout. Wow. And so like, I was like, okay, I'm ready. And we're watching the forecast. Still nothing, still nothing. Oh my goodness. And then I remember in January, I was standing outside and this girl was sitting on the phone and she just kind of looked weird. She didn't look like herself. And they called me to go down to visitation, which it could have been meant anything because it was a weekday and it was like during day. So it could have been drug tests. It could have been anything like that. And so they called me to go down there. And she just looked at me. She said, go get your blessing, girl. And I was like, I'm about to get out. And so I walked down there. And I remember I stepped outside and it was sunny. 
it was like nine o'clock in the sky. And all of a sudden, as I'm walking, the raindrops started falling on my face. And so I just started thanking God and praising God. And I walked down. That was January 7th, 2019. I walked into visitation and my lawyer said, you're getting out in August. I said, I know. Wow. <laughs> I know. So, my wow. goodness. What a story. What and, a story. And, and also, uh, Governor Bill Haslam, uh, I, I always like to thank him for being obedient Come on. because he even said like, oh, man, it's crazy because we, we, we hang out with the governor sometimes. We we, yeah. we eat lunch, <laughs> no, we, which is just crazy. You know? yes. He came to the prison. <laughs> he, before yeah, wow. he, he came to me. So, uh, and, mm. and very cool dude. Um, but, um, you know, he, he, he himself even said, you know, it was, it was, it was God. It was God. Mm. <laughs> because all that, everybody likes to say, and they like to try to take the glory from God and say, oh, this was mm. social media. Social media works. And Look, mm. oh, this is like this celebrity. This. No. Ain't nobody convincing no Bill Haslam. Mm-mm. Come on. Ain't no, no. ain't no, no celebrity convincing no Bill Haslam. That's, he's a very wealthy man. Yes. Well uh, respected. Yeah. Yes, that oil and gas money wealthy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> two yes. billion mailbox billion. money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, a celebrity, a rapper, you ain't. Doesn't so impress that. A, a athlete, like what? What? What are you gonna tell? His brother owns the 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 Cleveland Browns. So yeah, an athlete ain't finna influence him. He owns the Predators, the the um the hockey. Nashville hockey yeah. team. Like, no man. Proverbs, it's all God. Proverbs it's all God. Absolutely all God. And he, he flat out said yeah. it, but is it, and um, despite all that, is most humble person. Very humble. Most humble down to earth, like loves Jesus with his whole heart. Hey, Jamie. Just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah. Uh, you know, I read the book and yeah. I talked to Jay on the phone. And so um, I know a whole lot of the story and it's just, it's so amazing. Yeah. So, so Jay went and bought a house. Yep. And got it ready for his bride to come home. Mm-hmm. And I think how beautiful is that? Yes. Yeah. He prepared yes. a place he um, did. for his yeah. beautiful bride and, and so beautiful. And I was mm-hmm. like, I, I looked at him and I said, she's beautiful. Like, yeah. You know, and he said, yes, she is. Um, <laughs> look what God does, you yeah. know. And so is if if there's anything you guys have to say, what do you have to say to to those that are watching? Um, Centoya and Jay, both of you, what would you have to say to them, you know? Yeah, don't let anybody convince you that God's done. Like, he is not. Um, A lot of people would tell me, like, you know, odds and ends. Well, this is what the law says. This is what the statute says. This is what my judge says. Like, God is bigger than all of that. And I don't care how crazy they think you are, how they look at you, how they treat you, what they want to call you. You stand firm on that. Like, I told you, I was standing before the freaking center block walls, rebuking them. People thought that I needed to be in the mental health (laughs) ward. Okay. But like, I just knew in my heart and it was just like, this was just me and him this whole time. I was just so immersed in it. And like, it's something that, you know, I can never forget. And so now I get to travel the world and do exactly what I said when I was 16. When I prayed that prayer, begging God for that, I wasn't ready. Like, I couldn't have got out and really told anybody about anything. I didn't even know him. So how could I have got out and told the world about him and what he did for me? And so he was preparing me. And I couldn't see that at the time. I just thought that he denied me. He didn't. It was Mm. just he was preparing me for that. And so the way that he freed me, he freed me, but it was in a way that it can be freeing for so many other people on on so many different levels. And so his plan and his way is way greater than anything that I could have thought of. Like, I didn't even know Absolutely. it was possible. Right. The way things happen. Mm. And like you said, he came right on time. Right yes. in the last minute. <laughs> yeah. In the last when minute. When every single thing yeah. had been denied, there was this much of Come an on. inkling. So there could be no doubt that it was nobody but him but God. who wow. stepped in. Getting the glory. Yeah. So be reckless in your oh, faith. Absolutely. Be crazy in your faith. And so I had read that part and I highlighted it in your book. There's a couple parts that I wanted to bring out. And, and it says, I closed my eyes and I remember the night curled up in my jail cell crying out to God I wasn't sure existed if you let me out of here I'll tell the whole world about you yeah and you made a promise and you made a covenant with God that you didn't even realize you were doing mm. and and so many times you see Joseph in the Bible he had the dream where his parents are even bowing down to him his siblings are bowing down and he, he went out and he told the brothers the dream he didn't even understand it they sure didn't understand it. like we're gonna bow down to you that ain't gonna mm. happen um but it was yeah. for us it, it was something that needed to happen between the time of the promise and the covenant 
and that time for him to be ready. And mm. it's like that in our lives. And so um, when I was little, um, even though there was all this craziness and hell going on around me, even, you know, my dad was a pastor and I was huffing gas in the back while he was preaching, like literally um, while he was preaching. And, um, but I heard this story about Solomon and how he was asked what he wanted. And he said, I want the discernment, the wisdom to lead your people. And somehow it hit me in the heart so hard. And I began to pray that. I began to pray, God, I want the discernment. I want the wisdom to lead your people. I began to pray that. I began to pray that. I had no idea. I was making a covenant with God and he was going to do that. And he was going to use that. But there was going to be a whole lot that came to pass between that time and the time of the promise. And so even now um, with, you know, podcast, all United States going to several other countries, um, all that God is doing. You know, there was a time for television and radio and just mm. all kinds of things that God told me in the very beginning. Um, and I remember I told... I told my my baby daddy at the time I was with him since I was 14 years old yeah. and um and we were on our way to Florida to move and I hadn't said a word yet but I had been dreaming that I was speaking before all these people and I told him that God said I'm going to speak on radio I'm going to go to prisons I'm going to be television I'm going to do it. he said what you going to be talking about I, said, I don't know I don't know all I know is that's what he told me yeah. you know and so through over now 33 years of ministry, all of those things have come to pass. Wow. But there's a time between the promise, when Abraham yes. was promised you're gonna have, he said, look, look at the stars. Look at the saying, can you count those? He said, no. He said, that's how your descendants are gonna be. And then he yeah. had one child. And that one child, it took 25 years. Mm. So God has made you some promises. Yeah. There you go. And and listen, it, so it hadn't happened yet. But there if you go. will believe like Centoya and Jay did, and Come you'll on. begin to prophesy of those walls, and you will not care what anybody else yeah. thinks or what they feel, or they're Let's making go. fun of you, they don't believe, or your own family, your own mama has disowned you, but God has not. Mm. Yeah. And he said, that's the first scripture he ever gave me when my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me yeah. up. And it sure came to pass that my father and my mother forsook me, but the Lord took me up in everything that he ever promised, everything yeah. that he ever said is solid and it came to pass Amen. and it just like it did in their life and just like it will in your life if you'll dare to believe mm. and so I really love it the book I mean you, they told you so much it seems like but when you read the book there's so, so much, much missing <laughs> yeah. and awesome. there's so much more and it's so good it's so well written um, you know I've gotten a lot of books and um, so but they're not very well written some of them but this is very well yes. written very easy to read um, I read it you know, I think yeah. I took one evening and then the next evening, half the evening and, and was done. Um, this, I love this part of the book too. Page 286. The Lord was waiting for me this whole time. Man. He waited for me through the write-ups, the trips to SEG, because she did a lot of time in SEG, guys. She went in the hole. She's one of our people. She's a SEGger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, and you know, listen to me, SEGGers, you know, I call them SEGGers. Now they, they call themselves SEGGers too. We're do it people. We're action people. I, and so, you know, I was in the hole the two times I was in, as a kid um, locked up. I escaped um, my first place. And, um, and so I was in the hole. You know, people, a lot of talkers. Mm. We're, the seggers are doers. And that's yeah. why they're in seg. You know, but the thing is, when you get it turned around for God, you'll do for God. Yeah. Right? You'll yeah. do for God. So why do you think God's after those seggers? Why do you think he's rolling the stone away? I, that's what I call that door that rolls across, right? Or opens up that metal door. He's rolling the sto stone away for Lazarus. Yeah. And he's saying, come on, you were just asleep. And now mm. you're going to get up and you're going to lead others to the Lord. Come on. And um, so anyway, she's been a segger. He said, he waited for me when I denounced him to anybody who would listen. Yeah. He waited for me when I fell back into my old mistakes because we fall and we get up. When it seemed like I was powerless to stop myself from letting anger con take control and he opened my heart to the thing I desired most. Yeah. And, I, and I thought, oh, I got to share that because he's been waiting all along. Yeah, right. He's been waiting for you and he's still yes. waiting. And there's people that go, well, maybe I went too far and I, you know, did too much and no, God is still waiting on you no matter what you've done and how far you've gone. Yeah. So it's cool. Jay, what do you got to say to them? Uh, I want to just piggyback off that. Like if you have breath in your body, come on. Yeah. Yes. Forgiveness. Yes. It's for you. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of us, we feel ashamed of some of the things we've did, some of the things we've done. Trust me, some people have done things that they're saying they just didn't get caught. Right. But right. forgiveness is for everyone Come through on. Jesus Christ. Yes. yes. The whole point of the gospel is that Jesus Christ, an innocent man, 
came and died for us all. Everyone in this room, everyone under the sound of our voices, you, everybody. And if you just accept and believe. Yes. There's eternal life for you. There's freedom. And there's goodness beyond. It's a journey. Yeah. But this is the only race you want to run slow. Take your time. Get to know them. It's about relationship. It's not about rules. It's a relational thing. I like to tell young people who ask me about Christ, well, how do I know if he's real? I say, man, you, you got a girlfriend? He'd be like, yeah, I got a girlfriend. Well, how long y'all been together? About a year. I say, well, you know more about that girl because y'all stayed in communication with each other. Yes. But if you would have got her number and never used it, you would know things about her. You know her mother now. You know her father now. You know her favorite foods. Same with our relationship with Christ. He'll reveal himself to you. And if you're alive and breathing, there is a plan for your life. Point blank and the period. I don't care what it looks like. Trust me. No, don't trust me. Trust God. So would you lead them in a prayer? Let's pray and we'll pray out. All right. Father God, we just want to say thank you. Just thank you. We just want to say thank you, first of all. Before we ask you for anything, we just want to say thank you. And for everybody under the sound of our voice right now, Father God, we just want to thank you for uh, them tuning in. We know it's not by accident that they're tuning in. I want to thank you for the Real Vita podcast, Father. I pray that you continue to bless it. Take it, take it places that <laughs> they don't even know it's going. Father, all your will. Father God, I just want to pray for every person that is in a situation, a prison, jail. Father God, touch their hearts. Let them know that they're loved. And Father God, I pray even if it just be one, someone give their life to Christ from this testimony that they've heard tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you.